Yeah. So we got a 1988 Nintendo. Um, there's no games in it right now. The collection is over there. Um, I think there's like 31 games. Um, let's pull you over. Give you an idea of what I got. Um, yes, that is all six Mega Man's. Um, there's quite a collection there. Um, it's trying to complete the Mario collection. They didn't know Mario missing is uh, not a great game. Now the blades of steel I used to exchange uh, the backs off them. To make Mike Tyson's punch it look a little cleaner. Now I gotta get the 40 peroxide um, salon care and clean the front of it. Um, that's gonna take some time and you just gotta gently scrub and not try to take the label off while doing it. That's fairly hard. Um, there's some of the boxes for the original games. And there's a Japanese Nintendo 64. Um, game. I have a Japanese 64. It's not in the picture right now. Um, it is in my storage area. So I'll get back to things over here. What do we have here? Um, since I don't have a Super NES when I was younger, I um, found this at a friend's store. I've always been friends with Terry and Steve in their uh, awesome shop in town. And um, it was a really good price, uh, Super NES Mini Classic, I guess that's what they call them. Um, Preloaded games. Um, my friend was laughing, he, he, had, uh, he owned uh, Game Power back in the day, and he was wondering how did you get it open? Well, there's your USBs right there. So it's nifty. So. It's a little tricky. Um, yeah, the NES, one of the little tricks about it, they'll drive you, but the adapters, is always make sure these screws are nice and tight, they're just snug tight. That keeps them, yeah, they're loose. It reminds me, I'll have to tighten them up before I hook it up. Um, these come loose just like as if a string comes loose on a guitar and goes out of tune. Now here's a fantastic Ice Blue Nintendo 64. And yes, it does have an authentic Nintendo expansion pack. Thanks to my friend Brandon. Uh, he knows who he is and he's a good guy. Um, he has a collection of his own. Um, in fact, the couch I got is from a friend of Brandon's and I didn't even know he worked with Brandon at that same factory so yeah so yeah it's friendships knowing other people know people in the marketplace and looking at this system just checking it seeing if I have to open it and clean it there's always something you gotta do with these Always notice the 64s will take dust, and they all do. Um, it's important to clean your systems. Um, well, might as well show you the Japanese 64. You might not see one of these too many times. Uh, here she is. That's a Japanese Nintendo 64 on this. Oh, here we go. Bring it a little bit more. Um, see we got, there we go. Yeah, that's a standard issue system. Um, there's more rare systems out there than that one. That's just your basic player system. Um, but I do have lots of Japanese games for it. Even Star Fox. Um, there's a PS2 complete in box. Um, I have actually got um, a Nintendo Entertain System complete in box. I have the Nintendo over there, as you know. And I got the GameCube just by luck from my good friend Holly um, at the awesome store called Iceman Video Games. Check them out, Lindsay Pedro, wherever. Um, you can find them. 
and uh, they're really good in there. Matt, Holly, um, whomever you're dealing with, they'll always make sure that you have a nice clean Nintendo game. And if you get to know them really well, they'll even clean the game before you walk out of the shop. And it's just, you know, they do that for good customers. And, um, you know, it's establishing that friendship with your um, fellow video gamers, um, game shops, and I think it's important. And um, trying to get away from buying systems that are on Amazon. It's, uh, Amazon's good, but you gotta remember it also hurts the market for used video game shops such as um, in this area, Iceman Video Games, um, Chumley's, um, First Stop Swap Shop, and um, yeah, that's about it. Um, and it's um, there used to be more. Um, there used to be Gamers Mark. Um, there used to be Game Power before that. Um, and they're a lot. And they're wonderful people that own them. Uh, EB Games is hurting right now. Probably GameStop is also. And it's also downloadable content. So, you know, make sure you shop for the games. I know it, they can be expensive, but you know what? Wait till they come down price. Um, if you're a kid, put them on your Christmas list. You never know what's going to be underneath the tree. Because sometimes you might get a game from Amazon or something and it's damaged. I've seen some pretty scary stuff for the 64. Not going to say who. But um, it was a headache to get it, get it all fixed and make it work. But um, the most important thing is make sure that you always get a good look at the game authentication is everything in the gaming world um, I cannot say that enough especially on the 64s um, and or if you're buying Mega Man 5 um, I'll show you what an authentic Mega Man 5 will look like it should have trademark right there that's authentic it's got Capcom Capcom, um, some of the fakes won't have Capcom on them. See, Mega Man X came out during Mega Man 5, or during the making of Mega Man 6, so Nintendo took over. So that one can even be faked. So you gotta look for the density of colors and things. Does it discolor like the old school games? Like this old Friday the 13th thing, it's it's all yellow. And the Blades of Steel's got a yellow piece on it. Um, all those little things. And I even know people that are so particular, and they have to be. Because um, they got a lot in the line. They'll bring a security screwdriver and they'll even open it up to check the board. Um... It's a, it's an industry, and but it, it can be a lot of fun, but it can also be kind of dangerous because you can lose a lot of money real fast. Uh, which one is fake out of this collection? Um, this is actually not a real Micro Machines. Um, it's legal to own, but unfortunately, I got duped in a deal, and I didn't even know it was fake. Till somebody ex showed me, cause the the gold ones look different for certification. Um, they kind of got like a triangle, and um, and it says for like Nintendo use, mine doesn't. It's just solid. So, um, but it's a fun game to play. Whoever did it, um, did a good job. Um, but. If you like duplicates, um, they're out there. You, they're perfectly legal to own, but you just lose a ton of money if you're a collector. Unfortunately, real micro machines are worth like 30, 40, upwards, 80 bucks now. I think because of the re release of PS4, I think it was also on the Xbox One. Um, and probably because Nintendo re-released it on the Switch. Um, 
Yeah. So this is where I keep the cables. Uh, this is a junk drawer. Uh, but it is organized. Keep everything in zip-lock bags. So as you can see... Oh, I got one. Got two. And Nintendo's ready. Um, so, there we go. As you can see, I like reading. Um, reading a lot of the Incoons. Actually, this one, I'm just giving away. So, if you know somebody that wants one, it's right there. Message you back. Give me an address, and I'll send it to you for free. I'm just like, kind of guy. Kind guy. Oh, I gotta get a controller for you. Uh, okay, so that's a nice press board. I don't know, hardwood look like floor, laminate floor. It's really nice. So there you go. Uh, my sock. My sock for Mark. So, going with the basic controller. I can't hook it up yet. Gotta do a little tuning up. So I'll show you how to do these. Okay. My name is Frankie, by the way, Francis. Whatever you want to call me, Frankie. Frankie's good. Frank. Um, uh, I really need to get a toolbox. Just a small one. Uh, nothing that takes up much room. Uh, I get a little trusty out. A little trusty. Uh, yeah, Robertson. Screwdriver. I think I used to do woodworking class, so our teacher used to tell us to remember which screwdriver was which, how important it was. Um, I did not forward into um, that one's good. Uh, that's the other one, so it's. I have to put this over. Hmm. Yeah, it's good. Hmm. I'm just gonna give it a test. Hmm. And I'm gonna show you something. Now, there's a lot of confusion on the market that you might have a 001 Nintendo. Now this, I thought for a while when I got it, was a 001. It's not. Um, now it might say model number. NES 001, but that's kind of like a trademark number. There's a few things that factor into it. Um, I know for a fact it doesn't have these. It has to have the RF adapter only. That's a real 001. This is just a 1988. Um, there's somewhere on this machine, um, the manual says 88. And look at how high the number is in 1985. Now, it's over 125,000, so I, I don't think they would have produced that many. Because I know for a fact they weren't even thinking of producing Super Mario Bros. 2. Now, if you look at the art on 2 and 3, this was actually done by someone else. And I obviously know who used to own the game. Own the game. But oh well. That's a good thing to have sometimes. And I can fix it with white out. That's what somebody said to me. It's a good idea. So you notice Mario's mustache is different on this one. In Super Mario 3, this is authentic. This is the second version. So this is your 1990 version as opposed to your 89. So your original one would just be solid yellow. See how his feet are even different? Um, 
and also that he has a radish in his hand. He never has a radish. And see the layers are more, I'd say, squared as opposed to round, as Nintendo would prefer. Even in the first one, miss your black label copy. That's why it comes in this type of case, a little more steady, heavy, steady case, as I call them. And basically, it's a little more rounded. Um, that's the way Nintendo had fun. And, um, but um, yeah, it was the increase in enjoyment of the system being a good family system and just being a great all around trusty system you can plug in and play. With family and friends. Um, I've even had neighbors down playing it. I intend to have uh, a few more neighbors down. They're always great because everybody knows the system, knows the games. They're, um, and everybody can teach you something. I had a friend over, I'm not going to say his name, uh, protect his privacy because he's a really good guy. And, um, he taught me a lot about Tyson's Punch-Out, because um, I'm not the best at Tyson's Punch-Out. I may have the game, and I'll have to tell him Nintendo Switch has one. And back about the 001s, um, some of them do have the writing on them. And when you're on the inside of the boards, you have like fancy writing, really fancy writing. That's a authentic zero zero one. Okay, they're tight. It takes a few turns, but you have to be careful if they're already tight. So, it just gently turn them, then go back to them, and gently turn them, and then they'll be ready. So you got a solid connection. Because one time I remember it was so loose, I thought, oh my gosh, my Nintendo broke down. Turned out I didn't have them tight. They're just like tuning heads. Kind of like a Floyd Rose setup. And um, Guitar Talk, that's just a set of Allen bolts that hold your strings in brace. Um, it's called a Guitar's Worst Nightmare. It's called the Three Hour String Exchange. They're not fun. So, here we go. There's my guitars if you want to know. Got some nice ones. Um, that one actually was made when I was in school. Actually, one of my better years in school, grade 11. Um, would I say curricular? Yes, woodworking. But grade 10 was even better. Um, but grade 11, I was real. Looked pretty good back then. And, uh, Walk down hallways and the girls would be looking at me. And I also remember the year before. Man, that was also good. Uh, but I also remember skipping school just to go look at guitars like these. 2000s, 2001, 1990s. 1999s. I'm, um, I'm up there. I'm in my mid 30s now, 35. Um. They play back then 64s. 64s were the game systems. Um, my advice to anybody high school that's watching this and thinking they can't get uh, girls, I'm not trying to make a personal line, but here's the thing just be yourself. Um, don't go out evasively on all you. Um, don't be too impulsive. Just ask the door dance because it, it's just getting to the point sometimes. It can be difficult for guys. But, um, sometimes it's fun to be single. Um, and if you, uh, you're not going to impress them with fancy cars, I know that for a fact. Um, through friends. Um, female friends. When you work in the culinary industry, you meet a lot of female friends. And I'm not talking about girlfriends, just people. People in general. Um, bragging is not cool. But, um, 
yeah. A, a good sense of humor. Um, learn to laugh and just random goofy things like stickers and things like that. Even back then, I had a bit of a swagger to me. All those little nice things, they appreciate it. And if you're good at a skill, like in homework or whatever, you have time, just say, hey, I could help you with the homework. There you go. So I'm done on that. So we're getting this thing hooked up. But I just wanted to make it a little more structural. And not only are we hooking up Nintendo, and that's another thing. Don't be playing video games if you're hanging out with someone of the opposite gender. Unless you're, she's playing along with you. And don't get rowdy. You'll be playing. If she wins, be a good sport. Um, yeah. A lot of great things happening right now. And, um, it's, um, restaurant business is working great. And, uh, New cook is a really good guy. So never want to push these wires in too tight. These are um, very these cables can you, you can damage the inputs. It's not the cable. So you just have to be a little more careful with these, especially with these cords. These are hard to find now. Um, I'm on a collector site called North American Nintendo, yeah, North American NES Collectors, and you can buy video game systems. In fact, there's my, um, one of the fellow members, um, his name is Juan, you'll see it, he has the second version of the Nintendo, um, which is a little more harder to find, it's for 105 bucks American, if you are American, check it out. You might get yourself a nice deal. You might have to pay PayPal on it, but um, there's probably no PayPal fees, just like they have here in Canada. Um, this one probably came from Mississauga. Um, I bought it from a guy named Brian. Uh, I don't know the history behind it, because, no, electrons don't talk. <laughs> But I know it was purchased legally, um, and everything, so everything checks out on it. But I wanted one for so long, I remember it was like over three, four year wait for it. It took a long time to find one. Um, but I just have a passion for Nintendo. Well, I'm making this video a little long, because I want to set up a game and just show you how well the system works. Oh. Oh, man. Did that? Oh, no. No. I was trying to put in the flicker switch. Channel 3, channel 4 switch. As we all know, back in the day, any guy that's about 35, 40, 41, early 30s, 27, 25, we all want a little bit of the flicker switch. It's right here on the back. It's actually a pretty cool switch. Um, it's pretty small. Um, so if you couldn't get reception on your RF, your flick, flicker switch, you just flick it over to the other channel, see if it'll work. Um, another trick Nintendo did, so don't do this. Never push these down. What happens is it bends your pins, so I'm just going to try to get in there. Show you your pin set. If I had my light, I could show it to you. And I'm going to show you how to properly load the game. And how it sets up. So, so it's pretty basic. What you want to do is 8-track the game. That's an old 70s thing. That's how music was played in the 70s in a car. Your old eight track player. Now, if you've been out to David T's in uh, Saskatchewan looking for a Camaro, 
We may have came across an 8-track player in a Camaro. Like a 77 or 76 or a little further back. Some even got, came up in the 80s. Depend on what your options were. Um, not too many. Um, we went to cassette by then. <sighs> Cassettes are pretty cool and you probably never heard of them. They're a little more like a modified 8-track. I had a lot of fun doing this radio thing right record off the radio on the blank cassettes years and years ago rock and roll music called dr rock and uh it had a lot of just getting all that stuff and uh, lots of good music tunes to listen to i even sound put on a dj voice and just the fun things you do when you're a kid. It comes out when you have your Nintendo out. You just feel like a kid in a candy store again. But I think we all have good habits. Um, I had a friend that taught me how to read when I was younger. Read bigger, like a lot more heavy page books. That was my friend, Greg Young, honorable mention. So I know there's lots of youngs out there. Currently resides in town somewhere, and I'm gonna have to go see him. Um, but he does have kids. He has a wife, and um, you know it does take up their time. I just don't like bothering people when they are married. Um, it's nothing personal. It's just you know. Just trying to show respect and privacy towards people. Because it's a lot of work. It is a ton of work. Um, I'm even worse if I ever get to that point in my life. Um, okay, what shall we pick out tonight? Um, might as well with a f one I recently purchased. Um, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. Battle Toads. I don't know if uh, would be approved by YouTube. It's got an enemy that's a little bit, um, let's say, dressed for a certain. I don't know. It's a weird enemy. A weird enemy she is. <laughs> You know, I think she gets the look from Elvira, who just celebrated her 67th birthday yesterday, I do believe. And, um, but, so I'm just going to go with this one. Those super woodland creatures. And the robotic dog in the front. Um... Might blink, might not. I don't know. No, it's holding solid. I did clean this game a couple weeks back. I was kind of worried. I had a little dust. I do have some dust here. I got got to do some cleaning. The thing is, I get work, and I've been doing a lot of work. I'm soon gonna have to. So you see, in the country, hit the hay. There we go. <laughs> there is the system working. Actually, that's a pretty fun game. Um, has like a Super Nintendo -like vibe, but not really. Uh, toss crates. Uh, I'm guessing the apples are for your energy. Um, let's see if I can go one hand. Let's tilt the volume down, and I'm going to pull the headphone jack off the TV. Let's get it down to two. Still hear it. Yeah. yeah, this is what these systems sound like. Um, no, this is way different. No, it's a game within its own, right? I can definitely see why I paid a little more for this. Uh, look how the graphics are so nice for their age. 
all this brings back a lot of memories when I was a youngster watching Chippendale with my brother my good brother Paul uh, I'll see him uh, this weekend Christmas in Canada I mean uh, Thanksgiving in Canada I'm sorry when I get in game mode I, uh, I mess things up a little bit <laughs> So here we go. You gotta love this. The editorials. You don't see this in games too much. Sometimes, but it's nice. This is a Capcom classic. Um, I really feel bad for Capcom Vancouver. Nobody's heard yet. They went out of business. Um, that's how bad the market is right now for video gaming. Um, there is a lot of scary stuff that's going on. Um, a person once asked me if I wanted illegal um, video games. I said no. I had to turn them down because it's, it's against the law, but it really does hurt the community of video game builders. Yes, they are rich, but you got to remember, they're also making games for all of us. For all of us to enjoy. Why should we rip them off? Because you never know. They, that could have been a possible job for me. Or something. Because I have cousins out in Kelowna. And I'm a pretty good artist. There's some of my work right there. Um, it needs a little work. That's 71 Challenger. You can see the bottom trim. I need to straighten out a bit. Make sure the wheel's a little exposed. I'm just trying to figure out how to get it nice run of look I think rounding it would be my best bet okay here we go that was a huge editorial that is a typical game oh no these are things you gotta jump over okay I gotta get going my battery power is running low Oh yeah. And now he's gonna fall subject to the dog. Uh oh. Ooh. Well, that's what happens when you're playing one one player. That's a pretty fun game. Anyways, hope you had fun watching this and seeing a few of my consoles. I'm gonna have to put them all away. Um hopefully it wasn't too boring for you.